Alrighty, hello and welcome back. As you can see, we have our Umerix hammer slash Umerix hammer. This is a 510 caliber air rifle, 4500 psi in the bottle. So we go down into the plenum, regulated at 3000 psi. We've got an old school center point up here. A little scratch right up there, three to nine by thirty-two. Definitely nothing special. Air rifle deserves better. Maybe yes, definitely. Is the scope an issue? No. Let's get away from that. What we'll be shooting today? These are three hundred and eighty-eight grain, five ten caliber hollow points. I bought these off of the Nielsen site. You get a hundred round bag, shot a decent amount of them, for about $35. So, what, whenever I paid for them. D don't know what they cost anymore today, but back whenever I bought these, they were about $35 for a hundred round bag. Got our 10% calibrated gel. Just double verify, I will go shoot a BB into these before we actually go and do our testing here and as long as they show that they fall within around the three the three and a half inch mark we're good and you guys will be seeing this video so what, what we're doing today though is down there from the from my table right here what we got down there is 50 yards down by that gopher right there and you'll see that little hunk of wood. Now I'm going to put my gelatin on that hunk of wood right there. And right up there, by the little playground set thing. I used to use that for airsoft. Right in that tree line right there. That's where I'll be setting. That'll give us 100 yards down to where gopher that is 50 yards back behind this table which also gives me 150 if i'm shooting from the 100 yard from here it's just i only currently have a gong down there no table set up for the gelatin so future funds those birds are going at it like wild future funds will be put into investing into another table down there getting on to our specs here these 388 grain hollow point slugs will be leaving our hammer at 861 feet a second for 638 foot pounds of energy. I don't know the exact drag coefficient, water velocity is going to be down on impact. I, I do know my holdover, it's two mil dots, we're sighted in at 50 yards. I will not be running the slow mo on the camera on impact. I'll simply sync two different cameras, giving us the sound report, and hopefully, I can determine a velocity from there. I have a rough idea, it's around 0.16 and a G1 drag coefficient, but I've never actually measured 100 yard velocity. Given another overview that will be something we find out and we will find out how these work big 388 grain 510 cows 50 cows wonderful 50 cow air gun that i'm gonna go break out these gelatin blocks here get my cameras up and running and this is going to be a short one today Okay, and we'll go back to the table here. What we got going on, and I know this is going to be a little hard for you guys to see, I did slice about a half inch off of each of the blocks here. Starting at around the one inch mark on our entrance before we start to see some cavitation. Cavitation follows 
and really starts to open up. Starts at the one, see it around that three, three and a quarter. It's when it really starts to blow up. And it hold, held real big up until around six and a half inches. It's a little over three inches for our peak cavitation in the first block before things start to die off. We took a slight downwards trend and we ended up there's our projectile right there leading edge the 18 and a half and three quarters 18 and three quarters inches is our leading edge again i will go slice these a little bit more hopefully you guys can get a better look at this Take a look from the other side, you can't really see all too much. So, I'm going to go slice these a little bit more and try and give you a little in-depth as to what actually did go on inside of here. But for being 388 grains, sub 1,000 feet a second, sub 900 feet a second, this, this is an air gun after all. 18 and 3 quarters inches of penetration. And that that thing is massive looking so I'm gonna go take another slice and we'll be back all right so filleted us down a little bit more here talking about an inch and a half of the gelatin remaining and got ourselves a nice fat 50 cow entrance and you see that cavitation showing about two inches at its peak coming down a little bit as we come in Again, around that six, seven inch mark inside of her gel. So whenever things start to calm down, we trail, we go into her second block. Now what would have been the 18 and three quarters inch mark, since has fallen out, we've barely been able to capture. Right there where it's missing, that's where a projectile was at. We'll hold these here. Hopefully, so that way you get some light. Is there entrance looking? There's this half. Passing into block two. There's our side again. But what we got out of that is so right here. That is a hell of a big mushroom. We're gonna go slap this on the scale, see how much it weighs, hit it with the caliper, see how big it grown. That is one very wicked looking mushroom right there. Yeah, that is. So even at a hundred yards away, 50 cal air rifle definitely still does put a little bit of a wall up into things. Especially looking at that right there. That beefy. Oh. Meet you at the post review. Alrighty. So we're back here. Post production. Right there's our 510 388 grain hollow point slug. Final measurement came out to 386.6 grains, so a loss of 1.4 grains, which is sub 1%, be 1% at 100 grains, being that we're almost 400, about a quarter of a percent. Got our calipers out here, calipers are showing zero right there. We're just going to go take a couple measurements here. 0 0.7980 0 0.808 7995 7885 785 Oh, can we hold it there? 8 Zero two five. 
7-9-2, So I think it is safe to call those definitely 79 and possibly 8 tenths of an inch. 79 hundredths to 8 tenths of an inch. Again, we only lost 1.4 grains of mass, leaving us at 386.6 grains. We've got some nice rifling engraving going on right there. Just set that down in the frame. So you guys that right there. So it did engrave nicely for being an air rifle. Now the mushroom is a little off center. Now that's just all looks does not actually physically mean anything. Let me go from that side. Give you another view that way. So that is over 12 gauge diameter. Around 0.7273. I believe, believe it's 0.72. So we have expanded past 12 gauge bore diameter going from 50 cal, 510 caliber actually. Focus that again right there. I'll go pull one that hasn't been fired. Show that for comparison. That is the same slug that has not been fired. And we'll compare that to a 20 gauge slug. Let's do, go and show, let's flip these over. Actually, let's lie them like this if I can get that to hold still. Whoops. That is what we're looking at. Naturally, 510 cal to 510. I've got to pick that up. That rolled off of the table. So, base diameter is match right there. 510, 510. That's what it looked like before it was shot. Big fat hollow point. Slight spire going up towards it. More just a point. Flat base very long bearing surface that's what it looked like after and in comparison to 20 gauge slug let's see how i compare this this is 0.61 inches in diameter it'll sit and our 50 cow has a little bit of room to spare uh, pretty cool anyways wrapping that up thank you guys for watching and hopefully if you have anything that you would like to see I might have it on my hands and I can do something similar to this that thank you and goodbye